Hi all, I want to welcome you to, to the third lecture in chapter one. Um, I, I hope you had a nice time listening to the last two lectures. Like I always say, it's a video lecture, you can always pause it, listen to it, go back again, try to practice solving the problems. And as usual, remember that each of these things we do here, we're going to meet once a week to do a worksheet and practice on solving problems. And today we'll be looking at measurement, temperature, and density. Uh, yes, we start up immediately. Uh, I remember in our first class, in the last class, we talked about the importance of using scientific notations and significant figures in solving problems. Today we're gonna to be going straight into solving problems and we'll have a lot of that to do in this case. So the first of all, let's talk about measurement. Now, measurement units, are, there are so many types of measurement units that we use in our everyday life. And measurement uh, has been a part of better communication of mankind. So every measurement actually consists of two things. First, first thing first, every measurement consists, consists of a number or a numerical value, a number or a numerical value, and a value like i said it has a number or a numerical value and then there is an identifying unit to make a measurement complete if you look at what i have there i have some good examples there some examples there is that if i say i want two gallons of water now the number itself is the numerical value that has to come in place there has to be a number and then at the same time there has to be um, a unit here the unit is a common english measurement of measuring volume so if a number doesn't have these two tens if a measurement doesn't have to, to, to these two tens no proper communication is made and no understanding is made again if i say 25 degrees celsius this is telling me that the temperature maybe the temperature of yakima now is 25 degrees celsius it has both the number part and the unit part again as celsius and again if i say 212 degrees fahrenheit this is the number and this is the unit so every measurement constitute of a number and a unit and of course these units are actually based on agreed set of meaning people have to come together and agree on this and like i said it is a better way of communication if there are no if we don't have these understandings it will be very frustrating to do measurement so i have some very good examples around here you look at this uh here soda is very common in the united states these are sodas that are uh measured it could be 25 cl or 25 uh 25 uh 25 centimeter cube or cubic centimeter or 25 mils so these are all bottles of soda if you had your soda today you found out that the soda has a particular measurement on it again a pint of blood is a measurement this is blood we have inside and there's a pint of it so this a pint is also a measurement uh, a measurement itself and if you look at what we have here these are the common little uh, graphics uh, i got from wikipedia um this is the temperature this is the tap for measurement this is the uh, Elemire flask and this is the scale these are all used in measurement uh, to make sure that we communicate better and understand these quantities as well we get to the next. So there are two main systems of measurement. The first system of measurement is the most universally accepted. We call it the metric system of measurement. The, this, the metric system of measurement uses interesting decimal system in which larger and smaller units are represented by factors of 10. We're going to see what this thing means. I don't want to jump into it. And then it is used widely in all parts of the world. Perhaps I would say it is actually used much more part of the world, except the United States. The United States, on the other hand, still uses the old British system, or they will call it the English system. Now, the English system that was bequeathed by the Britain is being used around here, and uh, the United States uses it primarily. However, with that, there is no much problem of communication because there's always an ease in converting from one unit to another, and that is not much. A problem so now 
for us to understand measurement one, well, we need to understand the basic unit in metric system. Like we said, the basic the, the metric system is a more accepted system of measurement and it has a lot of things we need to understand. So the metric system has four main basic uh, units that will be of relevant. There, there, there could be more, but for this class, these ones are the ones that will be relevant for us to talk about. So these specific units are base units in which you need to either multiply them together to get other units. You need to multiply or divide them to get other higher quantity that we call the derived quantities. But we're not going to talk about those. So those are the meter. Meter measures the length and meter is the basic unit of this measurement. Then gram measures the mass and liter measures the volume, seconds measure the time. If you look at these three basic units of measurement, one thing that stands out with their unit is that if you look at their unit, all their units stand alone. Meter stands alone. If you look at grams, grams is standing alone. If you look at liter, liter is standing alone. If you look at seconds, seconds is standing alone. By the time we begin to go to other units, we find out that this particular basic unit will have an attachment. The moment they have an attachment, there are no more the basic unit. But the loss is in converting them from this base unit to the another unit of measurement, and then you can bring them back. And that is what we're going to be seeing in the next few slides. So the metric system uses what we call the metric prefixes. These metric prefixes also helps to manage big or large numbers, and it is based on a factor of 10. What that simply means is that a factor such as 10 raised to the power x is usually used in representing this number. x could be to, to be a positive or x could be a negative. Now, when the number increases or by it can increase either by a factor of x or it will decrease by a factor of 10 raised to the power x. So a very good example if you say kilo, kilo simply means 1000 or 10 raised to the power 3. So if I say one kilogram, look at look at what is happening here. This is where students make a lot of mistakes. Now, gram is the base unit of measurement. Kilo is the metric prefix. So what if I say kilogram, what it simply means is that my gram is here. I'm multiplying it by kilo. And what is kilo? Kilo means 10 raised to the power 3 of this. So you find out that every other unit will multiply the base unit. That is usually what happens. Every other unit are going to multiply the base unit for you to come up with any other derived or any other derived quantities around. So what that simply means is that a kilogram will be equal to 10 raised to the power 3 times gram. Or you can simply put, we don't usually show these times, we say 1 kilogram simply means 1,000 gram. And this it could be an interesting uh, unit or conversion as we're going to see as we move on. So the important metric system that you to know, need to know are the following. The mega simply means 1 million or 10 raised to the power 6 times the basic unit. So the basic unit, remember, can be your liter, it can be your grams, it can be your seconds, it can be your length meter. So it can be any of those ones. Kilo means 1,000 times the basic unit. Decimal, decimal means 1 over 10. That's 10 to the negative 1. Centi means 10 to the negative 2. Military. So you, you, it is your responsibility to memorize from mega till you get to nano. I'm just going to take away only pico for you. It is your responsibility to know this. The metric systems are not usually given. It is your responsibility to know them because other units of conversions will be given. But the metric systems is something you must have to memorize in this class. If you have any questions or concern about that, just let me know. See me in the office so that we can talk about those. We move on. Now, commonly used metric system. You see, like I said, it is always easy to convert from one unit to another, whether it is a metric system or English system. The table here shows us common, some of those relationships. Here we have the quantity, the length, the volume, the mass, the temperature, energy, and time. We're not going to talk about much about energy, but you know, it's still good to know. So if you look at the metric system here, it is meter, centimeter, millimeter. All these guys you see, apart from the basic unit, this is the base unit. Every other one has an attachment to them, and it shows us the relationship between each of them. And the volume goes down as you go. You see the base unit, and then you see other stuff. But I'm not going to talk much about these ones. And just going to use this table to do calculations when the time comes. 
Now, I really like this table. In fact, I got this table from where and I was able to make it up to look much more beautiful. I actually put this table on exam. Most of the common conversions we're going to be doing will, be, will stem from these, from these, uh, from these conversions. And it's good you keep this very much more close to your heart as we move on. Now, how do we convert from one unit to another? So in this concept, we're going to be talking about unit in conversion and dosage. So we're going to be seeing how we can convert from one unit to another, both in conversions and in dosage problems. You know, most of you are going to become nurses, uh, dentists, and, uh, you know, hygiene techs, and all the rest of them as, uh, in, in no distant time. Most times you have to deal with how to measure doses of drug with respect to the body weight of your patient. And this is part of what we're going to be talking about, about now. You see, I've outlined the steps we can do this. The step we use here is, is actually what we call the dimension analysis. The dimension analysis is a system of conversion that uses cancellation of unit to arrive at a conversion. Now, it is based on assumption that you can multiply everything by one and it gives you the same thing. That is too technical. I don't want to take you there. What matters in this place is that this method is called either dimension analysis or what we call the factor unit method or factor labor method. Whatever it is called, you're going to understand the steps. So the, I'm going to go through very quickly through these steps and then we're going to apply this in solving problems. That is where it matters most. Now, you're going to write down the known quantity or given quantity you have in your hand that's the one that was given to you you're going to write it down and then what are you going to do you're going to include both the value and the numerical unit as you were given you're going to write it down then you're going to leave yourself a working space you're going to leave a working you need enough room to do this and then the next thing you do is to set the quantity you the quantity equal to the unit of the unknown here I usually call this a conversion factor you're going to set your covalent your, your equivalent. So if you're going to convert, assuming you are told to convert from two relationship between kilogram to gram. So it is here that you say, okay, one kilogram will give me a thousand gram. This is where you write it down. If you're going to convert from one of these to this, this is where you write it down. And then what do you do next? We go to the next step. Step three, you will multiply the known quantity by one or more of the factors that you generated from here. I'm going to show you how to generate factors. Now, your idea is to cancel the unit you started with and then leave yourself with the unit you desire to get to. And then finally, after that is done, you're going to work out your arithmetic using your calculator. Make sure your calculator is close to you and we move. So the next thing is that how do we even generate these factors? How do we generate these factors? No, factors are generated. They're just numerical relationship between quantities. And those relationships can be defined or experimentally derived. There are a few ones I'm going to show you here. In a typical measurement problems, we know that if we're going to convert from meters to centimeter, what we're going to use is that a meter at any point is equivalent to 100 centimeter. So, and that provides two types of conversion factor for Look at that. You can put the meter on top and then bring the centimeter down to have one meter over one centimeter. Or you can also bring the centimeters up and have the meters down. These are two ways you can. Now, what matters is on what you're going to use will have to be your desired unit. What unit do you want to keep it? And what unit do you want to eliminate? Now, if you look at this second one, we can also have this in dosage problems. It comes as a word problem. You are given an equation that says 25 milligram per kilogram body weight. This is a conversion factor. What this simply means is that there is 25 milligram that is equivalent to one kilogram. So we can make up a conversion here. We can have it as 25 milligram over one kilogram, or we can say one kilogram over 25 kilogram. And depending on what we want to eliminate, we're going to use any of this factor to, to make a multiplication of unknown numbers. Let's put this into practice. That is the next thing. This is, this is what we have been working for all this while. The question says we should express 497 kilogram to 497 grams, sorry, to kilogram and milligram. This is two questions. Let's start from the first one. Let me try to put an A. The first one says, I'm going to convert the gram into a kilogram. That is what the first question says. Now, if you look at these two things now, to go from grams to kilograms, I have to look at the relationship. This question involves a metric system. I have to write that down. What this thing simply means, remember, 
I said earlier, the metric system kilo means what a thousand. So what it means is that a kilogram will be equivalent to 10 to the power 3 or just 1000 grams. What this plane means, I'm going to generate two, two uh, equivalences. I'm going to generate either the two equivalents I can generate from here will be, I will either say 1 kilogram is over 1000 gram or I can say 1000 gram over 1 kilogram. Now, I don't know which one to use, but what is going to decide what I'm going to use will be what I'm looking for. I want to convert to kilogram. So I'm going to be using this one. This one is going to stay on top. So what do I do? I have 497. Remember, you're going to get the number you have, 497 grams. And then you're going to multiply it by, I'm going to draw a line. Usually draw a line showing this. I'm going to draw a line. Now, remember. The one I'm going to use is this one because I'm looking for kilogram. My kilogram should be on the top. So what it means is that I'm going to have one kilogram on the top and I'm going to have a thousand gram on the bottom. Let's cancel. I'm going to cancel with another color. I'm going to try to do that with another color. Now my gram cancels my gram. And what do I have my answer at? My answer will be if I do 497 divided by 1000, that is going to give me 0 0.497. This is my 4 kilogram. This is how you do conversion problems. Now, we move on. The second one also says, how do we convert? If you look at the B part of the question, the B part of that question says we should convert the same grams to milligrams again what do we do we have to find the equivalent milli means 10 to the negative 3 so milli just what this thing means is that one gram what it means is that milli gram means 10 to the negative 3 so what can we do simple we remember again that one milligram this is the metric conversion system will be equivalent to 10 raised to the you can say one times 10 to the power of 3 or you can say just 10 to the power of three grams because milli means 10 to the power of three just remove your milli m and put 10 to the power of three so this is my conversion equivalent now again i'm going to make up two conversions here what am i going to make up first of all i'm looking for milligram that should not tell lost like i did the first time so i can have a milligram divided by 10 to the negative 3 gram or I can have 10 to the negative 3 gram divided by 1 milligram but since I don't need this I don't want it to be in grams it's already in grams I needed this I'm going to use this to multiply what I have so again I'm going to multiply my number so I'm going to multiply 497 times I'm going to draw a line again I'm going to draw a line times what do I have here I have my 1 milligram and under here, I have my 10 to negative 3 grams. Remember, this is gram. Again, I'm going to cancel with a different color. If you cancel this and cancel this, what do you get? You get, when you divide this by this, you're going to get 497,000 milligrams. And that solves our problem. Now, you can always pause this video, solve the problem yourself and come back and see what the answer is now we continue solving problems like i said i have quite a lot number of problems to solve in this chapter and the only way we can get better is by keep solving these problems and we're going to do that in this chapter very much so it says calculate the number of yards in 371 meters again if you look at one of those tables i showed you earlier um you find that they, they we're converting from a metric system meter to an english system so, and the common conversion we're going to have there is one meter is equivalent to 1.094 yards. This is what we have. So, since we're converting from, you say calculate the number of yards in this. What it means is that we're going from, the question simply tells us that we want to go from meters to yards. That is exactly the question. What that thing simply means is that 
I'm going to rearrange this conversion to make sure that my yards are is on top. So how do I rearrange this? I'm going to write out my first number first. I have 371 meters. I'm going to multiply this by. I'm going to multiply that by. By. What am I going to multiply with? Remember, as usual, I'm looking for yards. I want my yards to be on top. So my yards is going to be 1.094 yards divided by one meter and that makes sense if you look at it again my meter you cancel my meter and my answer is going to remain in yards and when you do your multiplication it's going to give you 406 yards that's exactly what this is going to give you so we move on the next problem now this problem involves two units you see when a problem involves two units do not be detected simply do it the same way we did the other one again systematically make sure you cancel the unit one after the other and what we decide the unit that will cancel is that you have to put it in such a way that they are diagonally cancel so what, to solve this problem i'm going to make it easy now now we have our conversion units already good enough we have it i have it given this time that one mile is equivalent to 1.609 kilometer and one hour is equivalent to this so what i'm going to do is that I'm going to draw a line. At times, some students like drawing these lines. I'm going to do it in this problem. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try to draw a straight line, a kind of table, and see and see how that works. This time, to use some students like this. So I try to mix up the way I solve problems. I'm going to draw this, and I'm going to try to draw. This will involve like two steps. I'm going to draw another line here, and then I'm going to draw another line here good i'm a big writer so i want it i have to have enough space to write so i'm going to start the question says 350 oops i didn't take away my line i have to choose my pencil so this will be 350 kilometer this is the number that we're giving the first thing i want to eliminate is kilometer what it means i'm going to put my kilometer down here and then i'm going to put my what up here i'm going to put my mile up because my mile is what i want i want it to be miles Look at it. We want it to be in miles per hour. So what I'm, what is the equivalence between these two? So what it means is that at this point, one mile is equivalent to what? 1.609. Okay, I'm going to rewrite my, my looks a little bit small. That my six. I'm going to make it look a little bit better. Good. So, no, so you can start canceling it immediately. You don't have to wait. So if you kilometer, we cancel kilometer. But we're not done. We have it in mile now. So the next thing we need to do is to do what? Is to finish it up. Now we want to cancel. Oh, you see, I missed out on this is kilometer per seconds. I didn't even put it there. This is my seconds. Now the next thing I want to do is to remove seconds. To remove seconds, look at what I'm going to use. What it means is that the seconds has to be on top. So I'm going to have 3600 seconds divided by one hour. Again, what happens there? I'm going to use another color to cancel seconds. We cancel seconds and at the end of the day if you put everything together i have it in miles per hour so we're gonna have 7.8 times 10 raised to power 5 miles per hour this is what we're gonna have when you solve that problem so it it doesn't matter you can draw lines in solving problems you don't have to draw lines whichever way that works for you that makes you to picture it very well that helps a lot the next question now, another metric system problem. It says, convert the following unit factor label method to this. You can always pause this video, read these questions to comprehension, and come back to them again. So let's, and then practice it. You have to practice and then check for comprehension and look at your answer. Okay, so what are we going to do? So in this case, always remember, the metric system will not be given to you. That one, I'm going to go back to my usual red color. I like writing with it. So. It's going to be one micrometer is equivalent to 10 to negative 6 meters. Remember this. Now, what that simply means is that I'm going to multiply my number and I'm going to. So, again, I want to be drawing line now for a little bit. It helps the student. I'm going to draw this line. This one involves two steps. So I'm going to just draw two lines. What this means is that I'm going to start with 13.02 meters. And I want to convert it to what? Micrometer. What that means is that my micrometer is going to be 
my one micrometer is going to be down here and then my 10 raised to the negative six okay this is an error now we want it to be micrometer so this is going to be up so i'm going to finish remove that because it's a mistake so i'm going to take the way this is a mistake sorry for doing that so my micrometer is going to be on top i want to cancel meters because i want it to be micrometer so my meter is going to be down so what am i going to have here i'm going to have 10 to the power negative six meters and up here i'm going to have one micrometer what do i have if you look at it again i'm going to cancel with my green as usual my meter cancels my meter and when you multiply this you're going to have 1.302 times 10 to the power of 7 micrometer this is what you have if you finish doing that problem let's do this one again again always i tell students always try to write out your conversion factor that is the most important thing one kilogram is equivalent to even now anytime i solve problems like this i try to write out my conversion factor because you cannot grow above it and that is the only way you don't make mistake when you're solving your problems so again i want to convert from kilogram to gram what it means is that my grams will have to be on top and what what am i starting with i'm starting with four nine one well, I will not have enough space here, so I will have to clean this a little bit and then make it a little bit. Or maybe I'm going to push back a little bit. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to say 4 point, I like writing big, times 10 to the power of 6 grams. This is what I want to convert to kilogram. Again, my kilogram is going to be on top. So I'm going to have 1 kilogram and I'm going to have 1,000 grams. And again, I use my green. I cancel it. Grams cancel grams. And what do I have here now? Is yes. 4,000 or 4910 kilogram will be my answer at this point. So we move on. You can always pause the video practice. I have a lot of practice here because this will be a fundamental basis for most of the successes we're going to have in this class because we're going to be solving a lot of problems. Again, now if you look at this problem now and look at that table I gave you, if you look at that table, we don't have a direct conversion from what? Uh, from male to quart, but we're going to do it in two step ways. So what are we going to do? I'm going to show you this. We're going to take it in two step ways. Look at what I want to do. I'm going to first of all take this male, convert it to liters, and I'm going to take the liters and convert it to quart, to quart. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to look at the conversion factors that I have. What are the conversion factors I have? I know that one liter is equivalent to a thousand males and i also know that one quart you look this up in your table you don't have to memorize this this will be provided particularly for what to this will be provided but this is a metric unit male is a metric unit so you have to memorize that so again this will be a three-step conversion so what am i going to do i'm going to draw my lines again i'm going to be drawing these lines more now so that that helps the student a lot they told me and that's a good thing that I remember at this time. At times I do forget, but you know, anything I can, anything that helps my students is worth doing them because I, I do this to make sure that you guys get every concept very clear. So let's start. You know, let's go back and start. So what it means is that I'm starting, I want to convert this to. So first of all, I'm going to convert this to liters. While doing that, I'm going to use these first two conversion factors. I'm going to use these two. So what it means is that I write out what I was given as usual, 2.06 times 10 to the negative 4 males. Now, what it means, my males is going to be down to cancel. And what the males will have, so my 1,000 males is going to be down, and my 1 liter is going to be up. And if I cancel that with my usual green, males cancel males, I have it in liters. I'm here now, so we've done this one. Now we're going to do this one. To do this one, we're going to be using this unit. To use that unit, I go back to red, and that is, what is the relationship? I want to eliminate leaders now, leave it in quart. This is the final destination. So my quart is going to be on top. What it means is that I'm going to have one quart. I'm going to have 0 0.946 liters. Again, I cancel with my green liter. We cancel liter. And when you do your arithmetic, punch this into your calculator, you're going to get 2.18 times 10 to the negative 7 quarts. So you can always pause the video, like I said, and come back and do this. Now, let's do this last one. You see, in doing this last one, this one, I'm going to make it into about four steps now. 
you don't have to do this you can look at the direct conversion but assuming what i have is this step look at what i'm gonna do i want to show you something this will interest you a lot so i want to convert from kilometer to meters remember this is a, a matrix fact system i'm going to convert it to the base i'm going to take it from the base i'm going to take it to centimeter which is another metric and i'm going to take it from metric again to inches this is a long so this is going to give us one two this is going to give us one so let me see let me use a point and this is going to give me one two and three steps so let's do it i'm going to draw a line first drawing a line i'm going to draw a long line at this point because this is, involves a lot of steps drawing a lot of lines first i'm going to draw this line try to make my line straight i'm not an artist but you know i hope i do try okay so i'm going to make this i'm going to now try to put the first one here and then give another space the first one and another one here let's see how we fit this in so we start with this so um i'm not going to write out the distance i don't think i have enough space but you can always look those spaces off for yourself you know those conversions so 1.78 kilometer first of all i want to convert from meters to kilometer this is a metric system so since i want to convert it from meter to kilometer my kilometer is going to be down here so what it means is that one kilometer is exactly 1000 meters i cancel before i continue this we cancel this i go back to my red again i'm here i've done this part the next one i want to do is this one i'm going to convert from meters to centimeter what does that mean i want to convert from meters to centimeter that means my centimeter is going to be on top and i know that one centimeter is actually 10 to the negative two meters it's a metric system you can look that up in the table i provided earlier and again finally i want to go from centimeter to inches if you look it up since we want the answer to be in inches so what are we going to do we're going to leave our inches on top so we know that one inch one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters so now i cancel overall so you find that meter we cancel meter centimeter we cancel centimeter and finally my answer is going to be two point if you do your arithmetic well make sure you know how to use your calculator i'm going to show you guys this in class if i didn't do it last time i'm going to try to make sure i do it again this is what we're going to have in this answer moving on to the next problem because i told you this is problem galore for this chapter and this chapter will help us navigate most of the other chapters that will involve solving of problem it says the measurement of 0.34 mil is equivalent to what so what it means we are going to go from mils to micro liter that's exactly what it's telling us now most times from mils to micro liter cannot be given to you because this is a metric system so what are we going to do we're going to go through the usual process we're going to want to go from mil to liters and we're going to from milliliters to micro liters so what it means is that we're converting it to the basic unit so we're going to remove this by converting it to the basic unit and from basic unit we take it back to the metric fixes so let us start again i'm going to draw a long line to fit this in so this is going to be this guy that line doesn't seem to be straight but that's fine it doesn't have to be so i'm going to have this oh this is even worse i'm going to have my long line i'm not going to have another one so let us start what do we have here so what i have here is 0 0.34 mils i'm going to multiply that by I have, I want to convert it to liters first. What it means, my mils are going to be down. So 1,000 mil is equivalent to one liter. And then from liters, I'm going to go to this. Remember, this is a metric system. Remember, for this, I didn't write it. But remember that one microliter will be equivalent to 10 to negative 6 liter. So what that means is that since my liter is going to cancel, I'm going to put my 10 to the negative 6 liters down here. And I'm going to put my 1 microliter up here if i do my cancellation as usual this we cancel this this we cancel this and all i'm left is microliter and when i write the answer i'm going to get it to be 340 microliter or it is in standard notation 3.4 times 10 to the 2 microliter and if you look at our answer this is exactly what we have at this point so 
moving on to the next problem as well. Now, this problem now is, is a dosage problem. Like I said, this is a dosage problem. And in dosage problems, I said it earlier when we started, the dosage problem gets their conversion from the question. You have to read it with con con concentration or comprehension rather to figure out all you need. So if you look at these questions, let's see. It says a certain infinite time alone concentration has a concentration of 10. I'm going to try to highlight all our conversions, 10 milligram this is a conversion factor the dosage indicates that you can be given five five milligram per kilogram body weight this is another conversion factor and it says if you want to lower the fever how much are you going to give a child with 25 23 pounds so basically i will advise them what you basically do in this kind of problem is to multiply all these things together that's exactly what this step is multiply all these things together and then find out you need to cancel so now, if you look at these things now, there is kilogram here, that means, but this is given in pounds. So the only important unit we need here is, if we know, you're going to always find this out, that one kilogram is equivalent to 2.205 pounds. So this is only what we need to solve this problem. The next thing, I'm going to draw the line. So I'm going to get my pen up to the right color. I'm going to Try to draw a long line and see how we do deal with this. So if I draw this long line, I'm going to try to pull this one, pull this one here, no, pull this one here. Let's see. So let's start. So I have, to, I'm starting with 23 pounds. So the baby weighs 23 pounds. LBS. Now, but there's no pounds here. So the first thing I need to do is to convert these pounds to kilograms using this so what it means my kilogram is going to be on top and my pounds is going to be below if you look at that what happens first i can take this off my pounds is gone now it opens up the door for me to do other stuff now from there look at part of that problem he said what else can i eliminate i can eliminate kilogram from here this the con he said the dosage indicates 5.0 milligram per kilogram body weight and it makes sense my milligram is on top my kilogram is down so what am i going to do i'm going to say 5.0 milligram and then my over one kilogram that's exactly what that meant so if you look at that again i'm going to cancel this kilogram is going with kilogram and then we still have now it says how many meals we're looking for the volume here look at the, the final destination of conversion that's what we're looking for so what are we going to do you see the next what it means is that we're going to eliminate this guy and let it be in meals and if you look at what we're going to use is 10 mil milligram per mil but if we put 10 here 10 milligram if we put 10 milligram over meals milligram will cancel milligram and give us milligram square that's not what we want so what it means is that we're going to flip that number so we're going to be flipping this we're going to flip this guy if we flip it what do we have it will help us so if we flip it i'm going to have what one meal up so look at it if i flip this number now i'm going to be having one meal of this guy over 10 dot milligram what does that tell you it tells you that oh, amico what's going on bro i thought you left for the day i came in to turn your lights off okay uh sorry guys i had a little bit of interruption from the security guys but we're going to continue the lectures anyway so nothing is bad about it all right so um sorry for that we're going to move on uh, with that, uh, the, there's no problem since the, pro the the problem is already in progress. So what do we do? The next thing we do is that we now cancel again. Since we have it in meals, we are close to our destination. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to say milligram. We cancel milligram. And if you look at it, everything has canceled. And my answer is left in meals. If you do your math, you're going to have 5.2 meals. And that is what you're going to get. Yes. So always know that in conversion problems in dosage problems you may have to flip numbers to make sure that your numbers or your your, your unit cancel comfortably another one that looks like that it says if an iv is mixed so that each 150 mil contains 500 milligrams of drug lidocaine how many minutes will it take for 750 milligrams of lidocaine to be administered if the rate is at five mils per minute again i tell students know your conversion factors begin to multiply all of them together this is the conversion factor 
500 mils contains this the conversion factor this is another conversion factor because it has two units every conversion factor has two units this is not so let's start it says the question actually what are we asked the question says how many minutes right we're looking for how many minutes so you can start multiplying from anyone so let me start from the first one so if i have let me draw my line as usual i don't want to forget that so i'm going to draw this line oh this time i have my green is fine i'm going to put with my green is okay so i'm going to have this so i'm going to start with 150 mils contains 500 milligrams this is a conversion factor that is exactly what we have there so now the next thing i'm going to do since I have this, what am I going to eliminate with the next one? If you look at the one we have here, if you look at this one, this one says 5 mils per minute. I can eliminate my mils. But what it means is that, again, I need to flip this number. I'm going to flip it. If I flip it, what happens? My 1 mil, 1 minute, sorry, comes up, and my 5 mil comes down. Again, let's see if that can cancel. Let me now use red since I sent that row to my green. And then I go back to the green again. I have it in minutes already, but we just want it to be minutes. We don't want it to be minutes per milligram, but we can cancel something else. Remember, we have 17 with 50 milligram floating alone. So what do we do? We cancel it by, we, you multiply this 17 milligram. And when you look at it, if I take my red again, milligram, we cancel milligram. Well, now I have, all I have left in this unit is minute. So what is going to be, I'm going to write my answer. So my answer is going to be, if you multiply everything together, it's going to be 45 minutes. This will be your final answer. So go to the next one. It says a doctor orders administration of drug at 120 milligrams per 1000 mils at 400 mils per 20 hours. It says how many milligrams of this drug would the patient receive every eight hours? Again, you can start from anywhere. I want to start from, I'm going to draw my line again. I'm going to draw the line for you guys. That helps a lot. I'm going to try to put this. I'm going to try to put this. So, I start. I'm going to start by, you can start from anywhere. So, I'm going to start by the 8 hours. Let me just start from the 8 hours. So, I have 8.0 hours here. And then, I want to eliminate my hour. This is the thing I'm going to use. This conversion unit has an hour. And good enough, the hour is down. So this means 400. Oh, I, that is too much of number. 400. I'm going to write the whole thing. It's all right. I'm going to write it. So this is 400 mils over 24 hours. If you look at that, again, the hour cancels the hour. And we're on track. And then... What are we looking for? It says how many milligrams, right? How many milligrams? Then we have this milligram per 1,000 mils. If you put this milligram like this, the milligram is going to be on top. We want it, so that helps us a lot. And the mils we cancel. So we're going to say 120 milligrams over 1,000 mils. You see, the thing naturally helped us and canceled itself. So now if I take my green, mils, we cancel mils. And everything I have will be in milligram. And the answer, is going to be my answer is going to be if you do your calculation very well this is going to give you 16 approximately 16 milligrams again the problem 10 i told you this is a problem galore for this and and i'm happy doing that so that you guys will be used to most of these conversions again feel free to pause this video get some rest drink some water come back solve the problem yourself and then watch the video to see what the answer gives you it says a nurse practitioner orders isotonic sodium lactate for 50 milligrams per kilogram body weight this is a conversion factor and then this was administered intravenously to a 130 pounds patient with severe acidity the rate of flow is 150 gtt s per minute meaning flow per minute and he said, and the IV administered set to 20 GTTS per mil. He said, where the GTTS stands for drops of fluid, what is the running time in minutes? So we're looking for the minutes. So we don't really care about how long the question is. 
or whatever. What it means is that we're going to put all our conversion factors together and multiply them across. So this is a lot of step I'm going to do. Well, I didn't get my line, but this is, this looks like a good line. Okay, that looks good. Freehand. So I'm going to put this. So I'm going to put this. I'm going to put this. I'm going to, I'm going to undo this. Then I'm going to put this. And I'm going to put this. Okay, let's start. So I can start with anything. This time I want to start with the with the, with the patient's weight. Because you see, the weight is in pounds. Nothing else that thing is in pounds. So I'm going to first of all start with that weight. And make sure I convert that weight. So I'm going to say 139 pounds. I want to convert it to kilogram. Because the next thing I have there is in kilogram. Usually, most times, they give these drugs in kilogram per body weight. But they measure it in pounds here in the United States. So the first thing you do is to convert it back. So I'm going to have, of course, I told you earlier, always this is the common thing you can memorize. One kilogram is equivalent to 2.205 pounds. So since I want to remove my pounds, my pounds is going to be down here, OBS, and then my one kilogram is going to be on top. Again, you see this, we cancel this. Uh, okay, let me cancel. I like canceling before we move on so that that doesn't confuse you. The next one is, I'm going to find something that will eliminate kilogram. Let me look at it. 50 meals per kilogram. Good enough. My meal is on top and my kilogram is on the bottom. Again, my kilogram is eliminated, making it much more easier for me. The next step. Now, it says, I want to remove my meals. Can I take away the meals? I can take away the meals with something that has meals. What is that? This guy, 20 GTTS per meal. So, but if you look at that, the meal, good enough. The meals is on top. The meals is on down here. So it can help. So I'm going to have my 20 GT. TS divided by what? By meal. By one meal. You can always put that. And again, let's try to eliminate it. It seems that my line wasn't complete. Then the last one, I'm going to try to put it with my free hand. And the last one is since we're looking for it a minute, we've not used this conversion factor. And you look at that, the GTTS is on top, the minute is down. And that helps us. You see, if you put the GTTS on top, it will be GTTS squared. You can't do that. So we're going to flip it. If you flip that, what do you have? You have that. I'm going to change this color back to red. It's going to be one minute on top over our 150 GTTX. And if we try to cancel again, what do we have? GTS cancel GTTS. And we have everything in minutes. And when you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get... 420 minutes that is what you get so now that will be the end of conversion factors dosage problems like i told you it has been a marathon solving these ones now we're going to go to temperature real quickly temperature is simply a measurement of how hot or how cold a body is mm, that's the commonest way we see it and there are so many units you can use in measuring temperature include the Fahrenheit, the Celsius, the Kelvin scales that are commonly used. Now, the Celsius and the Kelvin are commonly used in scientific work, as we're going to see by the time we get to other chapters in this book. And if you look at that, each of the measuring temperatures have um, what we call the boiling point and melting point. For the for for Fahrenheit, the boiling point is 212 Fahrenheit, and the melting point is 32. For Celsius, it's 100 and 0 degrees. For, for Kelvin is 373 and 273. But you don't need to worry yourself about these values here. They use them in higher level chemistry. Absolute zero. We'll not talk about them. What we simply need to do is to how to convert from one to another. And the formulas are given. I'm not going to suffer you to memorize these formulas. These formulas will always be provided for you in exam. So you do not need to memorize them. What you need to do is just to use them to solve the problem. Let's solve some problems. It says tonight's temperature Tonight's low in Yakima is going to be 43 degrees Fahrenheit. It says, what is the temperature in Celsius and Kelvin? Or oh, two problems. Am I, do, I don't have enough space and I'm going to try to fit it in. Remember the first formula there is that degrees Celsius will be equal to 5 over 9 bracket degree Fahrenheit. That's what you use. The degree Fahrenheit is 43. 43 minus 32. 
and when you punch this into your this thing you're gonna get 6.1 degrees celsius so the problems here are actually easy to solve it's not something very difficult what you simply need to do is to put on the the, the formula then if you want to convert since we have it in celsius now i want to convert from celsius to fahrenheit if you look at the formula if you convert from there it means add 273 to this number so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to take my 6.1 degrees celsius i'm going to add it plus 273 273 if you do that you're going to get 279 kelvin that is what you get as your final answer so this is these are what you get as your final answers all right so we move on from there the next one say tonight's temperature at the center of the south pole is going to be negative 53.5 what is the temperature in fahrenheit if you want to convert from celsius to fahrenheit you use the alternate formula it is stated there it's simply 9 over 5 bracket the temperature scale you multiply by the temperature scale the temperature we have here is negative 53.5 so now in doing this problem you have to multiply this number first before you add it to 32 within your calculator if you do that you're going to get negative 64.3 degrees fahrenheit this is how so, so temperature problems are trivial they are not difficult what you simply need to do is to know the formula like i said the formula will be provided for you in exam. You need not to memorize it. The next thing we're going to be going into here will be density. Um, of course, density simply means the ratio of mass and volume, mass to volume, which we simply say it is mass divided by volume. So where M is the mass, D is the density, V is the volume. And what it simply means, if you're giving the mass and the volume, you're going to just divide it and you get your name. It's, sim it's a simple ratio now a good example is what i have here if you have if an object the most commonly used density unit is grams per meal because this is a metric system it's a metric unit for liquid solid and gases and in gas we usually use grams per liter for gases so now a good example is if you're given a problem that has the volume and has the mass what you simply do is to do what i did here is to plug it in here divide it and since you have grams per mil the density here is measured in grams per mil we're going to practice this as we move on but before we do that we're going to talk about one more unit specific density specific density is a way of comparing the density of any other object to the density of water that is exactly what this means you compare the density of an object to the density of water so what do you do you take you know the density of water and you get the density of that object and divide it by the density of water that is why specific gravity usually represented as sg has no unit because the unit cancels out so example if at this temperature the density the copper has a density of this guy but we also know that density of water is 1.00 gram per meal. if you're looking for the specific gravity of copper we're going to divide the density of copper by that of this the unit cancels and this will be so specific gravity is a simple way of comparing the density of any other substance or object to that of water. It provides a common, uh, a common way of making comparison since we see water as usually a unity, a standard uh, density measurement of 1.0 grams per mil. Let us move on. Let's solve this problem. It says a 20 mil sample of liquid is put into, a, into an empty beaker. Now, the dense if you look at this thing let's start isolating what we need this is the volume of the liquid now if you put it into the beaker the mass of the beaker is given we know the mass of the beaker to be this guy but it says the mass of the beaker and the liquid now becomes this of course it makes sense if you put something in a beaker it's going to increase the mass of it so if you have let's say let me try to dramatize this if i have a beaker here the it's empty it's going to weigh less so if you put something in it it's going to weigh more that's exactly what we're talking about here so it says calculate the density remember the density is usually mass over volume but we need we have the volume of this object to be 20.00 mils but we don't know what we don't know there's something that we're missing we don't know the mass how do we determine the mass now we can get the mass by subtracting the mass of the beaker from the total mass so to get the mass of this we're going to the mass of this object will be the final mass with this so we're going to sub this is now we're going to subtract this guy from this guy so it's going to be 55 
0.891 grams minus 31.447 grams. If you do the subtraction, what do you get? You're going to get 24.444 grams of the solid. And now we are ready. We have our volume as 20 mils. We have this. So our density is now going to be our mass is 24.444 grams. Of course, you have to put your unit divided by 20.00 mils. And when you punch this in your calculator, you're going to have 1.222 grams per mils. That is the unit of the density. Remember, you must have to put the unit of anything you write. There cannot be any number without a unit. If not, the communication is incomplete. Again, let's do this one. It says the density of ion metal has been determined to be 7.2 grams per cubic centimeter. Use the density value to calculate this. So now remember, I didn't say this earlier. Maybe I forgot it. Density is used as a conversion factor. Density is used as a conversion factor. So density is a, anything that has more than two units can be used as a conversion factor. So density is a conversion factor. That is what we're going to do in this problem we're going to use density as a conversion factor what do we do let's see so we have 7.2 we're looking for what the mass good enough the grams is up so we're gonna we're not gonna touch it so what we're gonna do we're gonna start from what we were given 35.0 cubic centimeter we're gonna multiply that by since this is our conversion unit now what it simply means here is that there is uh, there is 7.2 grams is equivalent to one cubic centimeter. That's exactly what that means. So if if I have that, what do I do? I'm just going to know that my since my my grams is up here, I'm going to leave it up. So it's going to be 7.2 grams. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to put one cubic centimeter here, and then if I cancel that away, that is going to be my mass. So this is going to give me 252 grams. Again, that's the same thing you're going to do here. Now, what the difference between that and what you're going to do here is that you again, you start from 138 grams of iron. You're going to multiply that. Now, we're looking for volume. If you look at this, the volume is down. You don't want it to be down. You want anything you are, you are looking for is going to be on top. So, you're going to flip this or put the one centimeter up. So, I'm going to say one cubic centimeter will be equivalent to 7.2 grams. And again, what makes you know that you're correct? You're going to look at the cancellation. This cancels this, and it's going to give you equal to 19.2 cubic centimeter. That is how you know that you are correct. All right, we'll move on to the next problem. Now, this next problem, you're going to be doing this in the lab, but it's very interesting. We're going to talk about it. It simply means that it says uh, it is one of the ways you can use to determine the density of an object that is irregular. You know, if an object is a square or a rectangle, we can easily measure the size and calculate the density by multiplying the size, length times width times height. But at times, it's not possible. We get a rock that doesn't have a uniform uh, side. So what do we do? We have to work on it, and then we have to find a way to measure the volume. Of course, to measure the mass, that is very easy because we can easily put it in a weighing balance, and the mass will show up just like what we have here. This is 12.0 grams. However, what is going to happen? In this water displacement method, what happens? We call it water displacement. So I'm going to just write that. It's called water displacement. Displacement. In water displacement, what actually happens is that now you get maybe a rock that doesn't have a particular distance. You put some water. You, you have that object. You put water in a beaker or something that will contain it. And it has to be something that will not float it has to sink at the bottom now we put a particular volume of water inside this thing and drop let's say the rock inside the quartz rock inside what do you expect from here you find that the initial volume was at this point and at this point the volume has increased by two units now if you want to determine the volume of this the volume is equivalent to that unit that rose up so what do you do if you have the volume here as v1 you have the volume here as v2 if you want to determine the volume the volume will simply be, if you're going to do the volume, the volume will simply be your V2 minus your V1. V2 minus your V1. 
one will be the volume. So we're going to apply that in this problem. So we know the mass of this guy. The mass is equivalent to 12.4 grams. That's what we know. That one is clear. And then we we'll look the we it said it was placed into a graduated cylinder. The initial level of the cylinder was this before the rock was added. After the rock was added, it was this. So we're going to assume that this is our initial volume V1. This is our initial volume V2. So the volume of this rock, V, I'm going to remove this one. The volume of this rock, V, will be equal to, we subtract the final volume, which is V2 here, 29.9 mils minus 25.2 mils. And when you do this in your calculator, you're going to get 4.7 mils. Now we're close to getting our density. Then if you want to get your density, we have our mass already. So density is going to be, our mass is 12.4 grams divided by 4.7 mil. And that will give you, when you punch it in your calculator, 2.6 grams per mil. And this will be the density of this irregular piece of mineral quartz. This method is called using the water displacement method to determine the density of an irregular object. And we're going to do this in the lab. Another very interesting question here we're going to, we're going to solve is this. It says, an object has a mass of 2 kilograms, 2.0, 2 and a volume of this. What is the density of this object in this? What it means is that we're going to convert these two units into the desired unit of grams and mil. We're going to find the density, and we're going to compare that density with the density of water. Anything that has a density, since water has a density of 1.0 grams per mil, anything that has a density of greater than 1 is going to sink inside water. If the density is less than 1, it's going to flow. So let's start. The first thing we do first, we convert. Since we have it in kilogram, kilogram is a metric unit, remember, we're going to convert this guy to... So remember, 1 kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams and this is going to give us 2000 grams always pause the video from time to time solve the problem and come back again i'm going to take my quart now in taking quart look at what we're going to do the quart is a little bit now there's a relationship between one quart to this but we don't have it in mils so we can take it to mils if we're in quart already we can go to mils because a liter is equal to a thousand mils remember so we're going to do that so we're going to say 3.00 quarts I want to convert this to liters. What it means is I want to eliminate the quart. My liters is going to be 0 0.946 liters. And again, if you look at that, my quart is gone already. And I'm going to go back to my red times. But I want it to be mils because this is what I'm desiring, the mils here. So what I'm going to do, I know that the liter, I want to eliminate my liter and put it in what? In mils. Liter is a thousand mils. So again, use my green this goes and then my answer here is going to give me 2838 mils so it's it's cool since we have it in our desired unit if we want to now calculate our density our density is going to give us the mass of this guy is 2000 grams divided by 2838 mils and if you do that that will give you if you punch that in your calculator that is going to give you 0 0.7 grams per mil that's exactly what it's going to give you and 0 0.7 grams per mil is less than one gram per mil so what does that tell you it tells you that the object the object will float in water why because Its density, its density is less than, than what? That of water, than that of water. So this is how you know whether something will float or not. Then we'll move on to the next problem and we're getting close to finishing our problem. This one is like the ones we did earlier. It's just a little bit easy, but I'm still going to do them. 
and then we'll finish with that. What is the volume of 15 grams of silver? And we're given the density. Remember again, you want the volume, you have to flip this. So we're going to start with our 15 grams times, we want the volume, therefore we're going to say 1 cubic centimeter over 10.5 grams. And this is going to give you 1.4 centimeter cube. Again, this one, the same silver that has this density, we want to look for the mass for this one. So what it means, we're going to start with 19.0 cubic centimeter. We're going to multiply this by, now we want it to, we're looking for the mass. If you're looking for the mass, the mass is going to be on top. Good enough for density, the mass is always on top. So 10.5 grams over 1 cubic centimeter. If you do that, you find out that your unit cancels again, and then you're going to have your answer to be 200 grams. So you're going to cancel out this. I like showing my cancellation all the way so that students are not going to be confused in any way. Now, the last problem, the last but not the least, it has been a marathon ride in these lectures with a lot of problems. But I tell you, solving problems and practicing is the only way you're going to be perfect. Always pause the video if you're tired. Go back and watch them. Solve the problems for yourself, like I said, within from the note. And come back and try to look at what the answer is. For the last one, it says, what is the volume? Of 15 kilogram of silver again we're going to first of all convert this look at the density we have so we need to convert this kilogram to gram so if i start with 15.0 okay it's not 0, 0.0 so no need to do that so it's just 15 kilogram times i want to convert this to grams if i want to convert this i remember that my one kilogram is equivalent to 1000 grams and then if i have to cancel this guy and then go back to my red what do i do next now i can just take it directly uh, since i'm looking for what the volume the next conversion factor i'm going to look for, use is the density conversion factor and to get the volume i have to switch swap this or flip it whichever way you say it so it's going to be one cubic centimeter on top over 10.5 grams below again if i use my green and cancel this to this you find that my answer is going to everything is going to be in cubic centimeter and that's going to give you approximately 14 100 cubic centimeter and this is going to be our answer it has been a long ride quite a long lecture i didn't expect it like this but i believe in solving problems you do not have to watch this video completely uh, at once you're going to pause from time to time take a breather come back and finish it and it will be quite a ride in this class i promise you this is the first time i'm teaching online classes I know there could be some mistakes, but I promise you we're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to have fun in this class. Thank you for listening. I will stop at this point. Bye. Uh, before I forget, more problems in density are in our worksheet. Please try to make sure whenever we come and meet daily, we'll solve problems in our worksheet to make sure that we understand these things, digest them very well, and become perfect in them. And thank you for listening once again. Bye at this point.